Welcome to this discussion on repeated miscarriages or repeated pregnancy losses. I am Dr. Aarti Deen Dayal. I'm the clinical director in Mamta Fertility Hospital, Sikandrabad. And repeated pregnancy losses we see in about 1-2% to of our patients. And it's very psychologically distressing for our patient. And... It's very important that patients are aware that about 50% of the times we can actually make out what is the reason for repeated miscarriages. You should also know that how is a pregnancy test even diagnosed? Initially, you do a urine pregnancy test, but remember that a urine pregnancy test may be true positive for a pregnancy or it may be a false indicator sometimes. That is maybe it's not really a pregnancy positive but it's showing a false positive result. So how do you confirm that the urine pregnancy is really positive for a pregnancy? You do a beta HCG test which is a blood test which confirms whether the woman is really pregnant. After uh, the beta HCG reaches a particular value, can you actually make out in the ultrasound whether you are carrying the pregnancy within the uterus? Now with this basic information, you should also know that out of 100 patients who are pregnant, many of them suffer miscarriages either at the biochemical stage, that is the pregnancy just shows up in the blood and then the woman aborts or at a later stage the woman may actually suffer a miscarriage and did you know that out of 100 conceptions 30 of them actually reach live birth so you should understand that once in a way if one abortion happens we really do not investigate so when do you investigate we investigate when there are two or more consecutive pregnancy losses which are confirmed pregnancy losses, then we start our journey of evaluating why the pregnancy loss has happened. Now, a very common question we see is, is there any connection between pregnancy loss risk and the woman's age? The younger the woman, as you see over here, miscarriage risk is a little lower and after the woman crosses the age of 35 the risk of miscarriages increases and the woman crosses 40 the miscarriage risk further increases to about 50 to 55 percent now many a times our patients who've suffered one or two or three miscarriages ask us what is the risk of miscarrying once more now as you can see over here if the woman has had one miscarriage in the past her risk of recurrence is around 16 percent if she's had two miscarriages her risk of recurrence is about 24 to 29 percent if she's had three miscarriages, her risk of miscarriage is around 30 to 33 percent and four or more miscarriages, of course, her risk of miscarrying in the subsequent pregnancy is about 54 percent. Now, another common question we get asked is what are the common reasons for miscarriage? As I told you earlier, 50 percent of the times you can actually make out and you can with many investigations, of course, that uh, what is the reason for miscarriage? It can be genetic reasons. Again, it depends on whether the miscarriage happened in the first three months or whether the miscarriage happened after the first three months. Was it a first trimester, second trimester, third trimester miscarriage? And each type of miscarriage have different reasons why they may be miscarrying. They can be genetic reasons. There can be some endocrine abnormalities, some thyroid disturbance, uncontrolled diabetes, for example. 
it can be autoimmune conditions that is the woman may be actually carrying some antibodies inside her blood which are going and attacking the baby and causing a miscarriage it can be infectious reasons the woman may be having an infection which is causing the miscarriage to happen there can be problems in the sperm quality in the sperm dna quality there are so many reasons uh, which can be investigated and if we know what is the reason for miscarriage then treating the miscarriage uh, and treating the patient to prevent another miscarriage from happening becomes a lot more easier now how do you investigate again there are recommendations there is a genetic tests which are available we do 3d ultrasound to diagnose any problem in the woman's uterus or tubes or ovaries there are uh, blood tests available to check if she is carrying some sort of antibodies in her blood which are attacking the baby there are blood tests to see if she is having some endocrine problems like a thyroid disturbance uh, there are blood tests and other tests to diagnose diagnose if there is any infection there are semen tests to diagnose if the woman the man is having some sort of a problem in his sperm so we at a mamta fertility hospital of course do the whole gamut of tests and uh, we are specialized in doing a 2d 3d ultrasound for example you know there was this patient who came to us with repeated miscarriages and in a simple ultrasound we could actually see that in her uterus her layers her lining of the uterus was stuck and this was the reason why she was miscarrying and then we did uh, for another patient she was miscarrying she came with around four continuous abortions and uh, we did a 3d ultrasound which showed a uterine anomaly that is an abnormal shape of the uterus which was the reason it's called as a septate uterus these are just few of the examples why a miscarriage can happen and we could actually pick it up in uh, uh, ultrasound of the pelvis a good ultrasound of the pelvis and we knew that these were the reasons and then the subsequent uh, treatment was given surgery was done we cleared the problem and both these patients whose example i'm citing actually continued their pregnancy and had healthy live births so how do you manage again the management depends on what is the problem if there is a genetic issue they have to be further evaluated there are treatments uh, like pre implantation genetic diagnosis if there is a genetic condition which is diagnosed to decrease the risk of subsequent miscarriages if there is an endocrine problem we again uh, in uh you know in conjunction with an endocrinologist we sort of uh, handle that problem if there's an infection which is diagnosed we treat the infection if there is an autoimmune problem and antibodies are present again we uh, give medication for preventing these antibodies from attacking the baby if there is a sperm issue we work on that so as you see treatment of a repeated pregnancy loss requires a multidisciplinary approach now what is a multidisciplinary approach it's not just one doctor who can handle the whole case alone we have to have a team of doctors so we have a fertility team at our hospital who evaluate the patient who do a detailed 2d 3d ultrasound we have an embryology team in case the patient requires an ivf we have obstetrician teams we have a fetal medicine team who follow up the patient's pregnancy for those 9 months and do detailed scanning to see if the pregnancy and the baby is growing well we have a surgical team where if there is a problem which requires a surgical correction we then correct the problem we have an immunology allergy board so if we know that the patient has an immunological problem they are uh, evaluated in detail and then uh, of course the treatment is given one of our two of our members um, from the immunology board are uh, from germany so they are on the board and they help us understand and uh, treat the patient if they have an immunological problem we have an endocrine team so if there is an endocrine problem they help us further uh, manage the patient we have a genetics team we have pathologists to diagnose various forms of infection we have an andrology team in case the male is having a problem so that we can manage the problem 
problem we have a hematological team if there are say a, a problem in the blood there is a thrombophilia profile which is done and there are certain deficiencies uh, of certain proteins then of course we have our hematology team to manage the patient and of course we have our psychology team where a group of uh, psychologists along with our whole medical team are supporting the patient in this journey because we understand that other than medically wanting to understand why the abortion has happened the woman and the man require a lot of our support during this whole journey so it's a whole team at our place at our hospital who manages patients who repeatedly uh, miscarry uh, just a little story if you know i uh, be, i'm very frequently asked by patients whether it's only in the present uh, generation in the present century that uh, you know we are seeing so many patients who've had repeated miscarriages we've had uh, one of our patients had even 16 miscarriages before they approached us so we've seen ranging from one miscarriage to even 16 miscarriages patients who have approached us and many many of them uh, at our hospital almost about 90 percent of them uh, go back subsequently after a thorough evaluation with their live healthy child and uh, coming back to whether this was seen even in the past this is a story of uh, uh, leo tolstoy now he's a very famous author of several books of the uh, 18th uh, century his wife had 16 uh, times she was pregnant she had multiple abortions she had 13 children and out of 13 children only eight of them actually became adults so in those days, there was not so much of research on recurrent pregnancy loss. There was not so many advanced treatments out there for repeated pregnancy losses. So all they did was keep trying, keep trying and keep trying. And of course, now we are in a much better, uh, you know, era where there is so much of advancements in medicine. There are so many treatments, so many tests we can, which can actually pick up the reasons for repeated pregnancy losses and uh, many a times uh, just picking up the you know the reason why she's miscarrying or the couple are having this problem we are able to guide the couple forward now i get frequently asked fine there are medical uh, reasons why miscarriage may be happening there is a format there's a recommendation uh, uh, you know by the medical fraternity as to what should be done if the woman uh, miscarries multiple times but then what can the couple do immediately to improve their chances of pregnancy a good exercise routine regular moderate exercise good food habits a healthy lifestyle no alcohol no smoking, no recreational drugs, no artificial uh, sweeteners, no processed foods, good sleep routine. And of course, avoid watching uh, television or gadgets at least for one hour uh, before you go to sleep because this again is known to cause hormonal disturbances. So these are just very, very simple things which you can do immediately to improve and optimize your fertility and improve your chances of pregnancy and improve your chances of a healthy pregnancy. If you have any more queries, we'll be happy to answer your queries. Uh, do email us uh, on the link below and uh, you can contact us and uh, we can further discuss uh, why a pregnancy loss may be happening in your case remember just like a thumbprint is different and no two thumbprints are the same no two patients are the same and every patient has their own unique reason why they might be suffering uh, with the particular problem so uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to this discussion and i hope that uh, you are more equipped with better knowledge now and because we believe at Mamta Fertility Hospital that empowered patients are an asset to society. And uh, I really hope that this uh, session was of use to you.
Thank you.